I mean, think about it. It's almost like a female going into the store and just picking a pair of shoe collection. So let's go back there for a quick second because I just thought about something. Just tossing it out there. Information overload? Okay, so let's keep going. <laughs> There are so, so many human resources information systems you can use. When I tell you that there are too many, I mean, you got Paycom, you have Paylocity, you have Paychex, you have Namely, you have ADP, you have Bamboo HR. Let's not forget about Paycor. There's just so many. I'll be naming them all day. So the first thing that you have to do is make sure that you find the human resources information system that works for you, your organization, your systems, and your employees. So while you're looking for one, you're trying to figure out, how do I know what to look for when I'm finding one? That's a loaded question. The first thing you want to know is you want to make sure that you find one that works for your industry. Not all systems works for every single industry. So there are some systems that allow you to do an automatic time card or a time sheet. There are some that can go ahead and tell you exactly where your employee is at the time that they are clocking in or clocking out. And there are some systems that have none of those options at all. Do you need a system that's going to include your time cards and your time sheets? And do you need one that's going to have that information filtered into your payroll system? Or do you want to print a whole bunch of reports and give it to payroll every single pay period? So that's a big thing that you have to look for. That's one of your questions that you want to write down. As you're going through each of these systems, you're setting up your demos, you're setting up phone calls, you're doing your Zoom meetings so that you can see how their system works or what they have to offer. Make sure that you compile a list of the things that you're looking for. And that's the first thing that you want to see, which system works for my organization and the way that my employees are able to approach work every day. The next thing you want to know is which one has an easy implementation. Are they going to give you a full-time dedicated implementation specialist to help you through this information? Or do you have to go and download all of this information from your old systems or upload all the information from all of these Excel sheets that you've created throughout the years? So you want to ask them, what does your implementation system or your implementation process look like? What information do you need from me for it? What information do you need from other carriers for it? What information do you need me to prepare for it? And who's going to help me and hold my hand along the way? At the end of the day, the last thing you want to do while you're implementing a system is to not feel like a human resources professional and to feel like an IT specialist or an IT integrator. That's not your job. Their job is to make it easy for you. None of these systems are cheap. Most of them are super expensive. If you haven't gotten those costs where you've gotten it shared among your carriers, which is one option, or you have already allocated funds for this, or you need it in a crunch because you're really having a lot of administrative duties that's causing you a whole lot of work on the back end, then you definitely want to know who can help you. And you want them to give you an implementation calendar. What kind of time frame does it look like that I can first implement this system, run my first pay run, and do I use all components at one, or do I only use the human resources part that has the information in the timesheets? Can I use the applicant tracking side? Can I also use the performance evals? Can I also use the PAFs? Can I also have my vendors filing their information into it? What's the time frame for that? And does it work for you? So we kind of already hit on your next tip. You want to make sure you know what their integrations look like, what integrations are acceptable for their system. So if you're using it for payroll, you obviously want to know, does it feed in well with the bank that I use that's going to process this money out to my employees? Am I doing expense reports and I need my employees to update that information in this system? And do I have a system that's going to automatically integrate all of my credit card uses into the system automatically so that they can be approved? What's the approval process look like? And you want to know if that approval process is one where automatically this information is filtered over or do you get those managerial approvals as well? So you definitely want to know what do they integrate with? In addition to doing the payroll side of your integrations, do you integrate with my benefit carriers as well? So if I'm a person that uses Blue Cross Blue Shield, Cigna, Mass Mutual, are you going to automatically have an EDI feed that goes over every week, every month, every day so that I can get this information automatically done? Because in that integration, you want to make sure that your employees and you are going into one system to automatically trigger a qualifying event, a termination, a new hire. Oh, that brings me to COBRA notices. Are they automatically integrated with your COBRA system? 
or are they going to handle that for you? And if they handle that for you, can you easily access those long, like nine point font <laughs> PDFs that have to go out to these employees? Okay, so with that integration, do you put the rules into the system or will the system automatically know where to send it? Because everyone does know that it's a standard time to send those, but it's not always the same for our benefits. So some folks have benefits that end the day of your last employment. Sometimes they have benefits that end the end of that month. Sometimes they can extend it out. And when you have someone that accepts that COBRA and decides they want to stay on COBRA, is your system going to manage that for you as well? So you need to make sure that all of your external partners that you already use can integrate with that system as well. So I wouldn't rely only on asking the human resources information system. Definitely ask your brokers, your account managers, your contact persons, your customer service for all of those vendors that you use outside. So you want to make sure that they both are talking the same language. So we briefly already talked about this as well. What components are included in this system? Are you able to say, okay, it's going to be pretty darn easy because at the end of the day, I can go ahead and use payroll in this. I can use an applicant tracking system. This applicant tracking system is going to filter in all of my applications that come through Indeed, ZipRecruiter, Monster, anywhere that you choose, Glassdoor, wherever. So is this information going to automatically feed over and just dump into my applicant tracking system or do I have to contact every single applicant and say, hey, make sure you go to my website and apply as well. Okay, so if they're going to do that, how often are they going to update this information every time you post a job so you want to make sure that whatever systems you're using not only integrate but that it goes well with your processes over time so okay we already hit on the applicant tracking component we already hit on the payroll component and of course in your payroll component you want to see what does it look like for timesheets maybe bonuses maybe performance increases that's given on an annual basis you want to make sure that that entire payroll system encompasses what your company culture and processes currently is you don't want to adapt to the system you want them to adapt to you you're paying them to tons of money, right? You're their customer, you're their client. They are there to make you happy. So, okay, we already had those components out of the way. So does it do my performance evals as well? How many options does it give me to handle this in this performance eval component? Does it allow me to do an annual review, a 90 day review, a 360 review, a one-on-one -on -one review? Does it allow multiple approvals? Does it allow the employee to see it at the same time? Or do I have to wait and send it out to them? Like, how does that process look? And you want to compare that to the process you already have in place. Does it work for your organization? organization can they customize it to work for your organization okay so we had that out of the way how do my employees get access to it because you definitely want to make sure that the system you use is one that your employees can use as well the more your employees can use this system the more the administrative duties are kind of off your back so I always say definitely look for something where it's automatically easy to have that information in there because guess what if it's easy for employees to update that that leaves them to not come into your office as often because they need to do an address change or maybe they need to do a qualifying event or maybe they just want a copy of their performance review from last time because they don't remember what to talk about on this time so you want to make sure that you have a system that's easy for that does it have an app so that your employees can go into the system at any time and any location is it one that is easily accessible for employees that are international or ones that are national or across the state or just your ones that are close to the office does it allow you to have multiple offices in your system and in that payroll session so let's go back there for a quick second because I just thought about something does it do all those tax forms and make sure that if you have employees across the United States that you're doing all the tax deductions you should do and if that is the case does it have that in there okay so let's go back one more time and go back to the applicant tracking system does it automatically say okay I can do the i9 verification for you as well I can do the w4s I can make sure to have the right forms available for each state that your employees or your applicants may be applying from just tossing it out there information overload okay so let's keep going <laughs> okay so we already talked about applicant tracking we already talked about payroll we already talked about performance right so now we're already talking about how the employees can have access right so in that you want to make sure that they're probably getting their payroll stubs in there so that you're not sending out payroll stubs every time and that they can access them at any time what if they need to do that verification of employment and they need that history or what if their income has changed and they're refinancing their home you want to make sure that they can easily go into your system and and get that information so just like looking for all of the details to get you all set up you want to make sure that you have a system that's going to take care of you after your setup so will you have a dedicated specialist or do you call into a customer service number will you have someone that you can chat with online is there someone that you can send a direct email to or just a whole bunch of different departments that you have to get accustomed to so you definitely want to know what is my experience going to be like after we have implemented our entire system so all of those things may not seem like it's really helping you decide that okay I want 
to use this system for, for manufacturing or I want to use this system for retail or I want to use this system for a medical place. But I will tell you that you need to just know what your processes are like because all of these systems are so capable of really working with so many industries that you can almost cater so many of them that it doesn't narrow down your options a whole lot. Now, I would highly suggest always networking, reaching out to your team, reaching out to folks you know that work in human resources, that work in the same industry as you and say, hey, what system really works for you? But if your processes are different and you work in the same industry, your systems just might be different as well. So now I already told you what to look for when you're trying to find one, but how do you know if you even need one? <laughs> maybe you're a super small organization and Excel sheets really work for you. Or maybe you're a super big organization and you're finding yourself needing a lot more data than you've ever needed before. Especially during the times that we're living in now with COVID, the Delta variant, the changes in medical plans, different federal changes changing on a regular basis basis. I mean, it's really hard to keep up with a whole bunch of stuff. So if you're finding yourself spending a lot more admin time taking care of duties that once didn't take you very long, nine times out of 10, there's a system that can help you with that. That's one way to tell if you really need a human resources information system or not. Are you having a whole lot of administrative duties that's taking majority of your day and you can't seem to get to your projects or your must do's for the day? Then that's one hint that you probably should look into investing in this system. Do you have employees in various locations? Like they're all over the place. You really can't keep up with them. There are way too many emails. There are way too many phone calls. There are way too many voicemails. There are way too many chat messages. And you really want to know that, man, I just really have to make sure they all know that I need their time sheets every time by this time. And some people just need that reminder every single time, right? So maybe you're looking for a system that's going to be one that they can access anywhere preferably by Wi-Fi, or maybe you want one that they truly have to log into a computer or truly find a time clock clock into. There's so many systems now where you can just have employees clock in from an app on their phone. It gives you their location. It gives you their exact time. You even use a fingerprint so that you can verify that that's that person clocking in at that time. So if you want to know, well, Tamika, I didn't know there was an option for this and this takes a whole bunch of my time, then you probably should invest into one of these systems or start looking into which options may make that stuff a little bit easier for you so that you can focus on sustainable strategic planning versus everyday admin tasks. So another thing that might trigger you to tell you that you need a system is, are you having a lot of data management issues? Are you finding yourself really pulling in multiple places for these time cards? Every time a supervisor changes the time cards or the time reporting is presented to you differently. Are you finding yourself saying, it really would be helpful if we knew this information or that information and then you find yourself going through employee file digging an employee file digging an employee file after employee file and you just want to be able to just do a few clicks and get an excel sheet or pull a pdf or present this before your staff or present this before your department then that's one cue that you might need to invest or look into a human resources information system so now that you know if you need one and what you should be looking for when you get one what's the next step that you're looking at so now you want to know which components to get and which one should I implement first? So if time cards is your sore spot and you just can't seem to get time cards together in every week or every two weeks, it's a nightmare putting together a pay run. If you're finding yourself saying, you know what? I can't seem to get these time cards to work. Sometimes they punch, sometimes they don't. So I have way too many missed punches. Then you probably want to go ahead and put in the payroll side first. If you're finding your payroll person spending a whole bunch of time to produce one pay run, then yep, you probably want to look at putting in that payroll side first. If you're like all of our work really depends on how an employee performs for the year. And we also may use this to present to vendors so that we can get contracts or so that we can escalate to another level or our employees are having a really hard time communicating with their supervisors or their supervisors aren't doing very good with giving back communication. We really need that performance review side in. Then you probably should implement that component first. Or maybe you'll notice that your organization is growing so, so fast. You're having way more people roll into benefits. You having a hard time keeping Keeping up with those changes or maybe open enrollment time is just a nightmare because you have gobs and gobs of paper everywhere then you probably should implement 
the benefit side first. But don't forget that with each component that you implement, you want to make sure that it works for your vendors. So obviously you don't want to put in a new payroll system at the end of the year if it's going to be a three month implementation process because you have to do all of your end of the year reporting. So maybe you should go ahead and say, I'm going to implement this software in January or February when I can actually test it or use it right after I implement it. Or maybe you're like, oh man, open enrollment for me is always in May. So I won't want to implement this system or the benefits portion of the system in February, March, or April because it's a three month implementation time. So guess what? I want to go ahead and implement this system maybe in August. So you definitely want to look at your time frame as well and what works for your processes that you already have in place. So I know I'm kind of all over the place about this because y'all human resources information systems is just not an easy thing. It's not, I mean, think about it. It's almost like a female going into the store and just picking a pair of shoes. To a male, it sounds easy, right? To us, we want to know, can we wear it multiple times? Uh, what kind of events can I wear it to? What clothes do I have in the house that already match it? Is it going to be something I can wear at long-term events? Can I take stairs with it? Can I do an outside event or must it always be an inside event? And at the end of the day, what's the cost. So I have so many different angles that we're going into, but our very last part that we want to talk about in human resources information systems is the cost. I'm going to tell you all of them have a super big price tag, but some of them allow some flexible type of payments. Others allow you to get some payments from other places. Other places you say? Yes. There's some benefit carriers who do not offer any type of integration or any type of benefit management electronically. And they want you to find an electronic system so that it can be a simple EDI feed for them versus you sending them a super big file or dropping off like a box of paperwork or having it FedEx to them. So there's some some benefit carriers, your medical carriers, not really your dental, not really your vision, but mainly your medical carriers, your short-term carriers, your long-term carriers, even your disability carriers. Some of them will even take on the cost so that you can do it electronically. So they will say, well, we're going to pay this portion of this portion. It does come with you staying with their plan and keeping them as your carrier. But at the end of the day, it's a cost that you don't have to pay. And most costs are something that you pay up front early on. There are some that you pay as a continual cost, but the continual costs always get a little bit cheaper. If you're like Tamika, we already reached out to all those options. It's not working for us. Then you definitely want to include this into your budget and plan for it for the upcoming year. This will also give you time to find an implementation time to truly vet and demo quite a few systems so you find the one that works for you. I mean, there's just a workaround to it. You might not get that convenience as quick as you have or quick as you will want to or quick as it, it would be nice to have it. But if you tell finance, hey, I need a couple hundred thousand dollars. Nah, just joking. But it's usually like $20,000, $15,000, $20,000, $30,000. If you tell finance you need that up front and your organization can withstand that cost, then guess what? They're going to be happy to do it, especially when they know that they're already spitting that money out and administering of overhaul. So if you're spending all day, all week to do something that should only take you an hour or two, they're already spending the money. So that's your argument to get the money. A lot of human resources information systems offer discounts. Yeah, sounds crazy. But if you do it on their time frame that they have, sometimes they run a beginning of the year type of promotion and sometimes they run an end of the year type of promotion. Sometimes they will automatically give you a discount if you implement within their time frame versus making your own time frame. So there are different discounts that you can ask for. So I would definitely ask for them. In addition to to the time frame that you implement, a lot of times they will give you a discount if you agree to making sure to pay that bill in a certain pay schedule. So if you decide, okay, we're going to do quarterly payments ahead of time instead of doing monthly payments, or we're going to pay for the whole thing up front for a whole year versus doing it over the year, then they'll give you discounts for that too. Just make sure to ask for them. I don't think they'll offer them. Now, the last thing should be the obvious, y'all. It should be the obvious. You should automatically know, hey, Tamika, I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and get a quote from this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. They don't like making them quotes unless they know you're going to get their system. But at the end of the day, you want to make sure that it's one that you can afford, one that you can substantiate that cost, and one that you don't have to pull that cost from places that affect you, your employees, your organization, or your overall take-home margin of revenue. So I just want to thank you guys so much for sitting here and watching another Hey HR video. Listen, if you want to know about more topics like this, so if this intrigued you just so much that you're like, oh my God, I need more, then definitely hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the alert. But if you have any other suggestions for any videos that you definitely want me to produce, or maybe you just figured it'll be something interesting to know, then leave it in the comments below. So thank you so much for watching another Hey HR video. I can't wait to see you on the next one.